I alone cannot change the world, but I can cast a stone across the waters to create many ripples. Mother Teresa said that, and I love that saying. I thought about it, I thought it was perfect for where we are today. Good morning, it's great to be here with all of you. Yesterday, we looked backwards in order to look forwards. The history made at Bretton Woods was and remains truly extraordinary. <clears throat> now we shift gears to focus on the challenges of today and tomorrow. As we do so, it should not be lost on any one of us that we have awfully big shoes to fill. I'd like to share with you an approach to tackling big, unique challenges that pushes each one of us into the right perspective for the week ahead. My guess is that some of what follows may, you may find unorthodox. And some of it may seem awkward at times. Some of it so ordinary and commonplace because you practiced it a million times before without ever even thinking about it. Informed common sense, if you will. I've spent the better part of my life refining it because I truly believe that the bigger the challenge, the more important it is to have intentionality around the process, systems, and approach. The process I'm gonna talk with you about has already been used to take on big challenges. And it begins with the simple fact, we are all prisoners of our own perspective. Let me repeat that. We are all prisoners of our own perspective. Every day, in every way, we bring the perspective of our own life experiences, successes and failures alike, to bear on the challenges that we, conf we face. After all, we are all our own main characters in our movie called Life. Whether we are solving a problem that could change the course of history and the very shape of the world, or simply getting through another day of meetings and tasks, our own perspectives are always front and center. Let me show you what I mean. What do you see? Well, it depends on your perspective. If you're in the market for a new apartment in an urban area, looks like a nice neighborhood. You're gonna have a neighbor who likes gardening. If you're a member of law enforcement, you notice the bikes first and foremost, but what really concerns you are those stairwells. They're hard to get a look at what's going on down there. If you're a thief, you might notice that there's no security camera on that front door. There's a window open on the first floor. Point being, the same street looks different depending upon different individuals and their objectives, their perspectives. And that's okay. But when you're looking at a complex problem set instead of a street, it becomes problematic. Those who succeed, like those of you here in this room, typically have an ability to look at things from multiple perspectives. What is exceedingly rare, however, is for an individual to consciously or otherwise consider the entire spectrum of perspectives when looking at a problem. One of the things that we'll discuss shortly is the profound impact that Hollywood has had on the world. But for right now, I'd like to use a scene from one of my favorite clips, favorite movies, Lucy, to illustrate how powerful breaking out of the prison of perspective can be. Not merely looking at something from a different angle, but considering the perspective of time itself. What was? Not only yesterday, but yesteryear. A generation ago. A millennium ago. 
even further back. But more than what was in another time, why was it that way? What made it that way? And what unmade it to arrive at the destination we find ourselves at today? Lucy's mind is beyond our comprehension in this clip, surely in part because of the fact that she is literally able to access the perspective of time and space is in pressing a giant rewind button. But her ability to do this also fundamentally changes the way in which she sees the world, her current perspective. It's the coolest visual representation of this phenomena since Neo first unlocked the Matrix. Who doesn't want to be Neo or Lucy? We all want to use whatever power we have for a greater good. I'm just the guy here to tell you it's not just about your own power. It's about the power of understanding perspective. Harnessing that power, seeing the matrix, begins with breaking free from the shackles of your own perspective. And it has literally never been more important to do so. Because the way that the prison of perspective manifests itself most frequently is through rigidity of thought. Rigidity of thought. We see it all the time, but most of us don't see it for what it really is. An existential threat to innovative thinking, creativity, and even problem solving itself. The world is more complicated than ever. Disruption is everywhere. It interrupts and destabilizes our systems and norms, impacting individuals, organizations, and indeed all of our society. And it's affecting the very institutions that stabilized the world in the first place for nearly a century. Because as the world has grown more disrupted and more in, way, more in need of new ways of thinking, it has become easier and easier to retrench, to want nothing more than to go back to the good old days, the way it used to be. But unless somebody can actually create Doc Brown's DeLorean, we can't go back. And that's okay. Because the truth is that the bygone days we remember weren't that simple. And they weren't that good for everybody. Maybe the size and the scope of the challenges we face are just too much for most minds to bear. But for sure, the answer to these paradigms and questions and challenges can't be, well, that's the way we've done it before. Let's do it this way again. Rigidity of thought. It's the unseen enemy, enemy that endangers our ability or our capacity to tackle the challenges of our time. It courses through bureaucracies and not just the governmental ones. Think about it. The cutting edge dreamers of the last century aren't cooking up fantastical ideas in their garages anymore that are gonna change the scope of the world. They're sitting at the helm of massive corporations, staffed by hundreds of thousands of employees, beholden to perspectives they never envisioned, never imagined, never had to consider when they were creating the world that we now inhabit. What's been lost frequently is some of their creativity, and we need that now more than ever. Because the reality is that most expertise is narrow. Our education systems are designed to focus on specialization. Breadth of experience is uncommon. Meaning that many of those who are assigned and responsible for tackling the biggest challenges are, are only partly suited to the task. That's where creativity comes in. 
an absolutely necessary condition when creating a vision. Which is why we need to figure out how to bring that creative energy anew to our challenges and problems. And we can, ironically, look to the past for inspiration. History is rife with incredible minds, polymoths, if you will, who embody this energy in holistic thinking. Think of them as the greatest multidisciplinary thinkers of recorded history. Aristotle, Galileo, Michelangelo, da Vinci, each was unique and ahead of their time. My own favorite was da Vinci. In art, science, anatomy, each of these areas in which he spent his time, he was willing to have his own assumptions and beliefs questioned over and over and over again. To his dying day, he never stopped asking the questions of those with a different perspective. He never stopped leaning on people who he thought was more creative than he was, smarter than he thought he was. In point of fact, he was practicing holistic thinking long before anyone thought to name it. And that's what's needed today to tackle the global challenges on the scale of the ones that we'll be discussing right here this week. Truly holistic thinking. But we need to do more than just add a Da Vinci. And we couldn't anyways, they don't make him like him anymore. We can, however, take inspiration from his approach. But inspiration alone isn't enough, nor is any single modern day polymath. It takes creative energy. Creativity has never been more important. No matter what perspective you bring, creativity enhances it. But you can't just buy that energy off the shelf or will it into existence by wishing for it. You have to go find those creative minds and figure out how to inject their brilliance into the bloodstream of your challenge. What can a creative artist do other than create art? Well, look at what they've already done. Creatives not only dreamed of a different world than the one they lived in, they brought it to life with stories and movies that captivated us long before any of those dreams were realized in the physical world in which we live. Jules Verne battled sea beasts and submersibles way before the submarine was developed. Star Trek showed us what mobile two-way communications devices were long before all of us were walking around with cell phones. Okay, fine, John, but what does that have to do with the global challenges we face today? The disorder facing us like never before? Well, I would suggest that creatives have a part to play in each and every challenge we face because they are unbound by the constraints wired into most of our brains. And I can prove it. Arguably the most challenging days in the post 9-11 period for US forces in Iraq and Afghanistan were when roadside bombs, IEDs, were relatively new and alarmingly devastating. Something had to be done. And with the armed forces, that means a lot of things. That means intelligence, that means training, that means reconnaissance, that means force protection. One of the key questions that the DOD was asking is how do you detect the device? DOD largely under the auspices of an organization called JIEDO, we have to, J-I-E-D-D-O, because you have to have acronyms when you're talking DOD, was JIEDO was assigned with looking at the problem. And they asked us to convene a group of Hollywood uh, thinkers, Hollywood types, to come up with some different thoughts. And they sure did. In fact, because they brought a different perspective. Do you know what one of the surest tells of 
detecting where an IED is going to be is. It was the ability for the insurgents to capture the attack on camera. They had to get the shot. Because the propaganda videos being produced were, for recruiting purposes were far more impactful to the West than the horrific consequences of destroying one convoy at a time were. Creatives could see past that rigidity of thought and they came up with an answer. But that's just a one-off. How about this one? On 9-11 itself, our national security apparatus was woefully unprepared for an attack that used commercial airliners as offensive weapons. Of course they were, you might say. Who would have thought of such a thing? Well, the entertainment community did. In 1994 Tom, Cl 1994, Tom Clancy ended one of his Jack Ryan novels with a kamikaze pilot crashing his 747 into the U.S. Capitol, decimating the upper echelons of the U.S. government. Seven years later, it was clear that the intelligence community hadn't connected the dots. And a 9-11 commission report said so. Now, the U.S. military is among those who very intentionally bring creative minds from Hollywood and put them around a mixed table to truly unlock holistic thinking, to help tackle the enormous challenges they face. They don't do so for creativity's sake. They don't do so because of the cool factor of Hollywood or because the 9-11 Commission report called them out for a lack of imagination. They do so because time and time again, creative minds have proven to be experts at breaking out of the prison of their own perspective and helping others do the same. Creatives and the perspective they bring matter. Whatever challenge you're trying to solve, because they are literally Paid Imagineers used to working under a time budget. Paid Imagineers used to working under a time budget. Who wouldn't want a paid Imagineer used to working under a time budget for their blue sky process? But this only works if you group them with subject matter experts who have deep understanding of the topic at hand and then you sprinkle in proven thought leaders from outside of that space. It turns out that most of us have more creativity, have a greater degree of creativity in, in ourselves than we realize. But most people's creative energy usually gets boxed in, suppressed and shut off by as we age and by the world in which we work and live. The mixed table process helps unlock it. Once folks engage with a mixed table, they come into their full potential. Closed minds blossom. The inflexible my way or the highway types hit the road. Creatives inspire this in people and in doing so, produce an environment in which people from all backgrounds, all backgrounds, flourish, generating an energy and a passion that didn't exist before. The holistic thinking that emerges from this manner of mixed table has an exponentially better chance of solving problems than done without it. Unfortunately, you can't just throw these folks in a room, add water, and expect results. And that's where structure comes into play. You have to, in a way, force it to happen. Done right, the mixed table provides a constructs for discussing really difficult subjects. We saw this last night. It's not easy to have completely open and honest conversation about hard topics in this day and age in the public sphere. But a mixed table environment helps create that. And we need that to solve the problems and the challenges that we face today. We all need that. 
In the 100 plus mixed tables that we've produced over the past 15 years, the applicants, the, 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 the particip participants always start with a, why me? What can I do with this? Their body language is wrapped around like this. They don't want to engage with the other guy, the other gal, doesn't happen. But every single one of them ends with the participants exclaiming, oh my God, that was one of the coolest things I ever participated in my life. Ideas emerge, aha moments occur, then the passions are ignited. It's truly powerful. That's how you change the world. Which brings me to an important perspective I want to share with you now. We are at a mixed table right now, this very moment. To commemorate the history altering system born out of Bretton Woods 75 years ago. Our wonderful hosts have brought together thought leaders, subject matter experts, doers, creative minds. For one with such a rich diversity of accomplishments and ideas, because together, there shouldn't be any challenge that this group of people in this room can't take on. So as we look to the economy of the future, we need to make sure that we're thinking of the challenges that set our proverbial table, even though the challenges are enormous. Technological challenges, humanitarian crisis, the environment, society and political disruption. All are implicitly linked to the global economy and thus the fabric of this conference. So as you participate, learn, collaborate, I would humbly ask three things of you. First, recognize that each and every one of you has a prison of their own perspective. And embrace it. Because to someone else with a different perspective, it may represent exactly the paradigm shift that they've been seeking and create that aha moment. Everyone here has a contribution to make. Approach your time here that way, even if it's typically not your field. But second, do so while committing to break through your own rigidity of thought. And the simplest way to do that is pretty straightforward, folks. Allow yourself to be challenged. Listen. Learn. Cast no thought aside immediately, no matter how crazy it sounds at first blush. And third, trust me when I tell you that the mix of minds in this room more than makes up for Neria da Vinci among us. The mixed table with the right ingredients unlocks creativity you didn't even know you had. That's why we're here. The world needs more of us than any of us can accomplish alone, than any of our specialty areas can wrap around without each other. Never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. It's the only thing that ever has. This, right here, this moment, today, right now is a mixed table capable of producing truly holistic thinking that can change the world. It did 75 years ago and it can again today. Thank you very much. <laughs>